Ladies and gentlemen, the President of India, Shri Pranab Mukherjee. Good morning, excellencies, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Energy and Resource Institute, Terry, the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation, the Ministry of Urban Development, the Water and Sanitation Program of the World Bank, ADB, and other organizations, I'd like to welcome you all to the second edition of this international convention, the India Water Forum, 2013 on the theme water use efficiency. There is, however, a constant need to devise ways to regulate and monitor water consumption and usage to achieve greater water efficiency in the region. This global convention will provide a platform to share advanced knowledge and successful technologies developed in different countries and regions that address the challenges and provide solutions for the better management of water. We're very honored to have with us Sri Pranab Mukherjee, the Honorable President of India, Sri Hari Shravat, Honorable Union Minister for Water Resources, Dr. Shashi Tharoor, Honorable Minister of State for Human Resources, Dr. R. K. Pachori, Director General Terry, and Sri S. Prakash, Distinguished Fellow Terry. I now request the Honorable President, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, and our other distinguished guests to inaugurate the forum by lighting the ceremonial lamp. Honorable President of India, Shri Pranab Mukherjee Sahib, Honorable Minister for Water Resources, Shri Harish Rawatji, Honorable Minister of State for Human Resource Development, Dr. Shashi Tharoorji, Excellencies, colleagues, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and members of the media. It's a great privilege for us at Terry to be able to welcome the Honorable President of India at the inauguration of the India Water Forum. I also feel privileged to welcome the Honorable Minister for Water Resources and the Honorable Minister of State for Human Resource Development and this distinguished gathering. Terry established a separate division some years ago to focus on challenges related to the water sector in India, which involves issues of water availability and ensuring appropriate water quality for a variety of uses in the country. It's becoming increasingly evident that we would have to step up our efforts at improvement in water quality with a sense of urgency. We had highlighted this issue as well as the need to improve water use efficiency across the country long ago when we developed our major flagship study called Green India 2047, which was released on the eve of Independence Day 1997 when India reached 20, uh, 50 years as an independent nation. The then Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri I.K. Gujral, remarked that the results of our study, which covered every sector of the economy, should, and I quote, jolt us into action, end of quote. I am not sure whether we have had the requisite level of action since then. 
As a consequence, therefore, water quality and availability have been on the decline in the country. The drivers of increasing demand for water are the increase in our population, expansion of intensive agriculture, and large-scale urbanization combined with higher incomes. However, agriculture still consumes over 80% of the water supplied throughout the country, and this is where improvements in efficiency and reduction of pollutants in the form of chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and other chemicals need to take place urgently. A UNICEF study in 2013 has stated, and I quote, water pollution is adding to India's water woes with almost 70% of surface water and an increasing percentage of groundwater being contaminated by a biological as well as chemical, organic, inorganic, and toxic pollutants. India faces critical challenges and threats, both on account of excessive water pollution as well as decline in availability. A major factor that would affect availability of water in the future would be the impacts of climate change. In fact, the fourth assessment report of the IPCC, which I have the privilege of chairing, estimated per capita water availability at 1822 cu cubic meters per capita in 2002. And this is projected to decline to almost two thirds of this value by 2050. This is a subject on which Terry has established adequate expertise, and we could undertake studies across the country to assess impacts in the form of changes in precipitation patterns and resultant changes in water supply through high-level climate modeling capability that the Institute has created using a supercomputer that Terry has installed. The challenge that we face gets exacerbated further on account of increase in floods as well as droughts. For instance, the flood-affected areas in the country have increased to 40 million hectares. That's about 12% of India's geographic area from 19 million hectares in 1953. It is imperative that India takes in hand a program of water resource management that emphasizes intersectoral coordination, improvements in management capabilities, and substantial upgradation of efficiency of water use in every sector of the economy. This would be the central theme of the India Water Th Forum 2013 an event that Terry proposes to organize on a regular basis. We believe a focus on the water sector and the imperatives for change are a key ingredient of enhancing human welfare, ensuring the availability of clean drinking water for all, and the management of this vital resource for higher economic growth and development. We thank the Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee Saab, the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Sri Harish Rawatji and the Honorable Minister of State for Human Resource Development, Dr. Shashi Tharoorji, for honoring us with their presence. Their words would inspire us to continue with our mission in the future with renewed vigor. I once again welcome the distinguished gathering at the inauguration of the India Water Forum 2013. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Pachori. I now request Dr. R.K. Pachori, Director General Terry, to present an aloe vera sapling, which was grown at Terry Gram, to the Honorable President of India. Honorable President of India, Sri Pranab Mukherjee, Sri Hari Shravat, Honorary Minister, Honorable Minister for Water Resources, Dr. Rajendra Pachori, Dr. Sri Prakash, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be invited to share my thoughts on a matter so vital to the very existence of humanity. While the scientific significance of water as the basis of all life, human or otherwise, has been fully understood only recently, in practical terms, the story of civilization is in many ways the story of our ever sophisticated attempts to harness the potential of water. After all, as W.H. Auden wrote, thousands have lived without love, not one without water. As one of the newest but the most predominant inhabitants of this planet, human beings have successfully controlled many aspects of nature 
and our limited success in doing so has given us a limitless sense of complacency about the availability of water. Water fuels culture and religion. It has been the driving force behind the destiny of civilizations, whether their ascendance to greatness or their eventual fall into oblivion. Every aspect of governance from external affairs to economic sustenance to political relationships and social systems have their essential foundations in water and how it is used. In the world today, there are few sources of water which have not been tampered with by us. The natural abundance of water, combined with success in controlling it, has given industrial and agricultural advantage to some countries and given them a chance to pursue regional and global domination. Countries without water have been vulnerable to suffering and exploitation. Indeed, water scarcity is strongly correlated with epidemic disease, destabilizing violence, and corruption. Societies whose populations do not have access to clean water and sanitation, in time, suffer social unrest. Water is beginning to rival oil as a vital contested resource. And it is not idle speculation when many experts predict that the next big war amongst nations could well be for water. Closer to home, water scarcity is a ubiquitous fact of life in India. Our water-stressed regions are amongst the world's most densely populated. With 14 of our 20 major river basins severely stressed, India stands on the brink of a water famine. Ironically, some of our coastal communities are amongst the worst affected. They live with the sea, but they find no groundwater to consume. The poet Coleridge who wrote, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink, could have been thinking of parts of my constituency of Tiruvananthapuram. The primary cause of water stress in India is the growing population. And this is why we need to educate our children on this issue. In all fairness, our management of existing water resources has been disastrous too. Pollution into natural water sources has reached epidemic levels, thus making many sources of water unfit for all uses, agricultural and domestic. Our own catalog of incompetence and ignorance is endless. Infrastructure has not been upgraded, which leads to loss of water in distribution cycles. Agricultural methods are outdated, which ensures water is wasted. And alternative water resource management, like rainwater harvesting or stormwater gathering, has not been seriously encouraged or conscientiously pursued. Even free electricity to farmers ensures that water is harnessed unsustainably without regulation. Climate change will disrupt seasonal rains and bring in more droughts and floods. Water shortage could give rise to food grain shortages, a rise in prices of essential commodities, increases in malnutrition and hunger, and eventually to a rise in water mafias, violent conflicts and riots. I paint this apocalyptic picture because the man-made crisis is something we all have to live with. We see this in our urban planning, where so many problems of city water supplies are linked to the fact that urban planning is separated from water planning. And in many cases, water scarcity comes across as a man-made crisis which arises out of over-extraction or contamination. Water is not treated as an economic good in India, a mindset the national water policy of 2012 seeks to change. The national water policy is a step in the right direction, for it looks at the ecological, climate change, and conservational perspectives. Its focus on communities, staking a claim to their resources, and using climate resilient technologies is innovative. The setting up of a water dispute tribunal is also important to prevent conflicts arising over water. Equitable water management should be seen as a goal of our society and our educational system should start inculcating early an awareness of water problems in our children. Water in its many dimensions shapes the outlook of the society one lives in. Every social group must be enabled to voice their opinions, and this in turn must translate to the benefits of water management being distributed efficiently with equity, while keeping in mind the many factors that hurt us, discrimination, corruption, power, and information. Benjamin Franklin once said, when the wells dry, we know the worth of water. Before such a scenario takes place, I hope we rise to the challenge from our classrooms to our panchayats, 
create better regulatory working systems when distributing water, and bridge the gap between the water haves and have-nots. This India Water Forum is a vital step in this direction. Together, let us always be able to satisfy our national thirst for water. Thank you, and Jai. Paramadhani Rashtrapati Sri Pranam Mukherjee, my ministerial colleague, Dr. Sashi Tharu, Dr. R. K. Pachauri, Sri Sri Prakash, Excellencies, respected delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to greet you at this forum being jointly organized by the Energy and Resource Institute, the Ministry of Urban Development, the Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation, and the World Bank's Water and Sanitation Program. I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all the participants. Water is essential to our lives, our society, our culture, and our economy. India, water is, the, water is worshipped as the incarnation of God, Varuna, and the rain is treated as the blessing of King Lord Indra. It is in this spirit our great leaders have always emphasized on harnessing of water resources and their sustainable development. Honorable Sir, we are now a country that supports about 18% of the global population and have only 4% of the world's utilizable water resources and 2.4% agricultural land. Till today, our water management system has done a good job in creating irrigation potential, in providing safe drinking water to our people to a certain extent, in meeting the industrial water demands as well as in addressing the environmental issues. But we cannot miss the challenges ahead in the water sector in the form of reducing per capita availability of water due to increasing, increasing population, over exploitation of groundwater resources, suboptimal utilization, and lower efficiency of the created facilities for water utilization. Incidences, as uh, Dr. Pachauri has rightly mentioned, of pollution of rivers and groundwater have become a big menace in the water sector. Honorable President, I am thankful to you for highlighting the enormity of situation by observing the last governor's conference that we are now already a water stress nation and with further reduction in per capita availability of water, we will soon be a water scarce nation. The present per capita availability of water is 1,545 cubic meter per year. By 2050, this will further decrease to 1,140 cubic meter. To keep the present level of water availability, we are required to add another 200 billion cubic meter water reservoir capacity to our present capacity of 252 billion cubic meter. Honorable Sir, your government is fully aware of the challenges in the water sector and is committed to finding solutions. The National Water Policy 2012 and the National Water Mission retreat the country's focus on various water issues and government's intervention and the ways to ensure water conservation and equitable use. The National Water Policy 2012 envisages adoption of integrated water resource management approaches to ensure adequate water supply, water use efficiency in the agriculture and industrial sector, issues related to the impact of climate change, robust institutional arrangement, and water pricing are the core areas in water sector. Keeping in view the need for greater water awareness, the Union Cabinet has declared the year 2013 as Water Conservation Year to sensitize the public opinion about the importance of efficient use of conservation of each and every drop of water to meet